Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome again today for a new lesson. Today we are going to look at mathematics, and the topic the topic today is measurement. And, uh, you realize that my voice is not very clear because of the mask that I was wearing, but you allow me to remove it for you to get me very well. Now, friends, I want us to look at maths and uh, under measurements is the topic measurement is the topic and I want us to look at specifically area of borders I want us to look at the area of borders because you will realize that uh, most of you sometimes you find difficulty in finding the area of borders without much ado I want us to go direct and look at the first example that we are having. In this case, I want to draw a rectangle here. Friends, look at the rectangle I want to draw here. This is a rectangle. And you will realize that one of the features of a rectangle is that two opposite sides of a rectangle are equal. Is that this one? As well, this and this one. Now, before I do the area of the borders, I want us to look at the area of a rectangle first. Let's take for example, let me take the measurements like this one. You can say this is 15 centimeters. That is the length. The width, let it be 6 centimeters. We all know how to find the area of a rectangle is by using the formula. We multiply the length. The longer side is the one that we call it the length. This is the length. Then this is the width, this is the width. Now, area of a rectangle is given by length times width. We multiply our length, which is 15 centimeters, 15 centimeters times six centimeters. <coughs> Let me use the long multiplication method for you to understand. That is 15 times six. 6 times 5, you get 30, you write 0, you carry 3. 6 by 1 is 6, plus 3, you get 9. Now, our area will be 90 square centimeters. Now, this is the area of a rectangle. This is the area of a rectangle. But what I want us to understand this morning, friends, I want us to look at the area of the borders area of the borders in this case let me just change a few things here for us to understand the borders to see how we are supposed to work out this one look at this diagram of mine let me draw this is example two example two yes I have drawn two rectangles. I have drawn two rectangles. We have the outer, which is the bigger rectangle, and the inner rectangle, which is somehow smaller. I want you also to realize that this side, this length is equal to this one, as well as this one is equal to this one. The inner rectangle, the same, the measurements, equal to this one, this one is equal to this one. Because we all know that the two opposite sides of a rectangle, they are equal. And I also want you to realize that they are also parallel. When I say they are parallel, I mean they don't meet anywhere. The two lines are parallel. They can just go, but they will never meet. That is why I'm saying they are parallel. Now here, we have two rectangles. The smaller rectangle, which is inside, and the outer rectangle that is outside. Let's give the measurements. For instance, you can say the measurement of the outer one, let me take the length as 20 centimeters. Then I can take the width as 8 centimeters. Then I look at the inner rectangle, which is smaller. But there, allow me to shade it so that you can see the difference. You can see the difference the way it is. Yes, this one is somewhat clear. Now, here we have the small rectangle. The measurements, for instance, this is 12 centimeter. 
then here you can take five centimeters now our question is find the area find the area of the unshaded unshaded parts in the above figure this is the figure that i'm talking about here we have two diagrams find the area of the unshaded part now this one is very important you underline unshaded because we want to look at the area of the unshaded part unshaded means that the area that is not shaded now this is the part that i'm talking about this one is unshaded this the inner rectangle is shaded <laughs> now this is the a the border that we are talking about because we are looking at area of the borders now this part that is unshaded is the border that we are talking about we want to find the area of the unshaded the area of the borders it is easy number one first of all you must work out the area of the bigger rectangle then you calculate the area of the inner smaller rectangle then you find the difference this is how we're gonna do it area of the bigger rectangle we take the length which is 20 centimeters now area is given first of all we write the formula for you to remember area of a rectangle is length you multiply by width which is 20 centimeters multiplied by the width which is 8 centimeters 8 centimeters now you take 20 times 8 this is 0 this is 60 now the area will be 160 square centimeters 160 square centimeters now that is the area of the outer rectangle now I want us to look at the area of the inner rectangle. We use the inner measurements, the measurements of the smaller rectangle. That is 12 and 5. Now area of a rectangle again is given by length times width. Whereby we take the length of the inner one is 12 centimeters multiplied by the width which is 5 centimeters. When you multiply 12 by 5, you will get 60 square centimeters. 60 square centimeters. Now, 60 square centimeters is the area of the inner rectangle. The area of the bigger, the outer rectangle is 160. But here we are looking at area of the border. Because the question is asking us, find the area of the unshaded part. Now you find the difference between the bigger rectangle and the smaller rectangle. In this case, you will take 160 squared centimeter minus 60 squared centimeters. The difference that is 0, 0, 1. Your answer will be 100 square centimeter. Now this 100 square centimeter is the area of the unshaded part. This is the part that we are talking about. This one is unshaded. This one is shaded. Now, maybe just to take you through the whole process. I said that at the beginning that you find the area of the bigger rectangle, then you find the different you find the area of the smaller rectangle, then you take the two areas, you find the difference of the two areas. That is, that will be your answer for the area of the borders. Now, friends, that is what I wanted us to understand. Thank you so much for listening. And I want us to meet next time as we do more examples. But please remember to do some more exercises on the same.